Hello, everybody. We're going to continue reading from the New Revised Standard Version today on John's Gospel, and we're going to finish up John chapter 6. Uh, we'll start at verse 52 and go all the way through verse 71. Now, um, here we're going to hear of uh, uh, Jesus talking about the, um, uh, again, the, the crossing of two worlds. But this time it's going to be brought home to the sacrament of communion. And uh, for some of you who come out of a Roman background, um, these words are going to sound very familiar in the interpretation that our Roman brothers and sisters um, have on the nature of communion. And then we're actually going to spend just a minute talking about um, uh, our Protestant uh, or our, our uh, certainly United Methodist understanding of what this means. But anyway, I invite you to listen uh, as we pick up. John chapter 6, verse 52 through the end of the chapter. The Jews then disputed among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life. And I will raise them up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father has sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Not like that which your ancestors ate, and they died. But the one who eats this bread will live forever. He said these things while he was teaching in the synagogue at Capernaum. When many of his disciples heard it, they said, This teaching is difficult. Who can accept it? But Jesus, being aware of the, that his disciples were complaining about it, said to them, Does this offend you? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life. The flesh is useless. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But among you there are some who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the first who were the ones that did not believe and who was the one that would betray him. And he said, for this reason I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted by the Father. Because of this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer went about with him. So Jesus asked the twelve, Do you also wish to go away? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. Jesus answered them, Did I not choose you, the twelve? Yet one of you is a devil. He was speaking of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, for he, though one of the twelve, was going to betray him. So again, we see this, this culmination of otherworldly, thisworldly, and how the two are brought together. Um, in a more of a Roman under, Roman Catholic understanding of things, um, they call uh, transubstantiation. In other words, um, in the act of communion, that the uh, Eucharist becomes the body of Christ, and that the cup becomes the blood of Christ. And um, we we do not believe that. Um, we believe that that next part that this is a grace. This is a spiritual act. Um, yes, the presence of Christ is at work in communion, but the physical transubstantiation of the elements of bread do not become flesh, nor does the cup become blood. It's grape juice or it's wine. Um, it's still bread, but it is the grace of God. It is that spiritual presence that is so important. Now, one of the things, and again, we don't have, uh, I can't turn this into a whole sermon, but um, verse 63, this has been a misnomer or a misapplied concept in our faith. Um, it talks about the spirit gives life and the flesh is useless. 
Um, oh man, it is so tempting, especially when times are tough, to consider our fleshly needs, our worldly needs, if you will, this world as nothing. And oh, the, but the spirit is everything. And friends, I want to tell you um, the sum total of the gospel of John, but certainly the rest of the gospels do not lend itself to that kind of interpretation. Okay. I think if we apply that teaching to what he was talking about when he's talking about my body, eternal life, the bread of life, all of that really does matter. Um, and that's why the Methodist interpretation of communion is what it is. It's not that um, you know flesh gives life. It's, it's the Spirit of God present that gives us life. It is not saying that this life is useless, oh, this world is horrible, who can... No, it's not a Gnostic understanding of things. But it is telling us um, that uh, this our end point is not all about the flesh. It's not all about uh, this world. And it's certainly not about that the bread becomes the chunks of flesh or, or, or the other. It's kind of... I think that's why some of the people went away. Um, one quick note to... The disciples are not just the 12 until right here in the Gospel of John. You notice there was a group of disciples with Jesus, but after they hear all of this, they scratch their heads and it's just too much and they walk off. I think it's important to remember that in John's Gospel, the 12 is the final group. Okay, There are other people listening, but there may be 150 people with Jesus up to this point. But the 12 are the ones that stick it out in the hard teachings, in the difficult times. Um, so when times get tough, are you one of the 12? Let's pray. Lord, thank you for how through the sacrament of communion, we continue to encounter you, the living bread uh, from heaven. God, help us to partake. Um, help us, God, to be feasting upon the manna that you provide to us in our everyday lives and certainly through the sacrament of communion. Um, God, we thank you for the 12 who had the faith to persevere. And God, we want to be one of those people. We want to be counted in that number of the saints who, when times got tough, when teaching got tough, when living got tough, uh, we want to be the ones that, well, we stuck it out. We want to be one of that number. So God, give us the grace we need to do it and follow you always in Jesus' name. Amen.